So the next we're going to move on is, we're just going to touch on is the Impressionist, the Impressionist School. And this is by Guy Wiggins, who was one of the old Lyme art school uh, and probably one of the better known of the school. If you haven't had the opportunity to go to the Florence Grizzle Museum uh, down in Old Lyme, it's, it, it's a treasure down there. And the Coscop School in Greenwich is another museum of American Impressionism. And so this fellow painted New York snow scenes. He started in Old Lyme, Connecticut. And uh, this one uh, is painted in front of the plaza. Uh, and that's Sherman, um, and oh, <laughs> after his march, he got up on his horse and he, and he sat for a, a sculptor. Uh, and let's see, but it's a very important scene. And so Guy Wiggins was really well known for doing New York snow scenes. And he's very well saw after he did taxi cab, yellow cabs, Red American, red, white, and blue American flags, and he made a great living uh, painting these impressionist scenes. And the the one over there that Kevin already hung up was by Henry C. White. He was one of the first of the old line artists. There was probably oh probably fifty artists who went down and painted an old line. There again, they were painting the landscapes. They were still, it was, it, Old mm -hmm. Lyme area lent itself very much because of the rocky coast of Old Lyme, the rocks out in the pastures, the stone walls, the great trees, and it became a haven for uh, the growth of Impressionism, where a lot of the artists went to France, learned the technique, came back, and Miss Florence Griswold, uh, allowed the artist to live at her home very inexpensively in exchange many times for paintings. And so Henry C. White, uh, who lived, his family lived out in Waterford, Connecticut, um, very well known family, and he was one of the first of three generations to paint. And one of the big changes between the tonalist and Hudson River School painters and the Impressionists was that the Impressionists would go out into nature, set up an easel, and paint right there in the field. Uh, the tonalists would do preparatory sketches and little paintings, go back to the studio, and then produce these, you know, magnificent, highly detailed images. Uh, you know, uh, Rickard didn't spend, you know, 25 hours out on the first street. Uh, in the village of Niagara, painting that painting. Uh, but the Impressionists could go through a painting, um, you know, in a few hours, and because of their broad brush strokes and quick brush strokes, they could create their, their artwork outside. And one of the benefits of being outside is that you could capture local scenes. And uh, I'll let you tell us about this scene. I found this scene a long time ago, and I am convinced that that is our house. Um, it's, our house is built 1725, it is exactly that scene. In fact, the house was white with green shutters, there's a road that goes across here, there was a barn right there, the driveway is exactly the same, and a wall, a stone wall. And this was artist, it's signed by here, Daniel F. Wentworth, 1890, he painted in Hartford. It's very likely that he could have come down to looking for scenes to paint. And I really do believe that the only thing that he changed was I, our chimney is granite, and he painted it as burnt. <laughs> because he wanted a little red spot, uh, and that's what it's called, artistic license. <laughs> but I really think that that is our house. And it's, um, so it's a watercolor. And there again, there's the cows because they were great subjects. They just stood there. Uh, and so then, uh, do you believe him? This is the old, cows? back to the old yeah, line school. This is one of the last of the old line artists 
and his name was Alex Poplowski of Colchester. And he was a young man, young, very young, teenager. He loved to paint. Uh, his occupation was body work. He was the best body guy. He could match paint really well. And uh, he went down and would hang around Miss Florence's academy. And uh, the artist took him in because they saw that he loved it, he had a talent for it. And so Alex started to paint with the older artists. And uh, I actually knew him. And so he was the last, or one of the very last, of the old line art school. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a local scene. He never made the big time. He probably, his talent was not, didn't really mature enough to compete with the Guy Wiggins or the Child Hassams or, but he continued to paint around Colchester and um, everybody loved him in town and his paintings are spread around everywhere all over town. Uh, I, I particularly like this little canvas by Alex. Um, there's something about it that's really crisp and tight and really kind of captures the, a good perspective on the landscape but uh, you know, it's more like a little, a little vision. Uh, but his larger landscapes, sometimes they tend to fall apart here. The perspective there goes a little bit, and um, you know. But this one really holds holds together and really is, is a nice quality landscape by him. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.